Hi, I'm Don Higgins, and I want to share with you the story of a buck I call Smokey that I was fortunate enough to shoot this season. We're going to start with my first encounter where Smokey came out, but we didn't quite get a shot on him. Got some good footage, however. And then we're going to move on to the hunt where I actually do shoot Smokey. But most importantly, I want you to stay tuned for the, the entire hunt and see in the end where I share the history of watching this buck grow up from a two and a half year old to over a 200 inch world class whitetail. Well, I waited for the right wind. We needed a northwest wind to hunt this stand, and when we finally got it on October 15th, it was really windy, and I was a little bit worried about that, but long towards sunset, the wind calmed down and conditions were just perfect. It's October 15th and we just had a really uh, strong cold front push through. Temperatures today are about uh, 25 or so degrees cooler than they were yesterday. So we're back here after Smoky again. Um, last time we did see him about 80 yards. Uh, unfortunately he went the other way instead of coming towards us. But uh, we know from trail camera pictures he's been coming through right in front of this blind. So, uh, you know, every time that the wind's right, we're going to be in here trying to catch him, um, hoping this cold front gets him on his feet. Uh, one minor concern I have today is the wind is pretty strong, but uh, the wind's supposed to lay tonight and the wind's supposed to be good again tomorrow. So if we don't get him this evening, then uh, we'll be back in here tomorrow morning and tomorrow evening if need be and uh, see what we can do about getting smoky on the ground.
down. Got him. He's down. <laughs> <laughs> over and I looked up and I seen the prairie grass just moving a little bit and I focused in on that spot and I could see that giant rack just moving that prairie grass I told Kyle here he comes here he comes here, here comes a buck you know and I grabbed up my nose and I could see it was him I'll tell you what I've waited 13 years for this 13 years 13 years ago I shot a 214 inch buck and I've been trying to get another 200 incher ever since. And, and I mean, I've I've searched. I can't even tell you how much I've searched for a 200 inch buck. The first person I'm going to call is my dad. My dad is. He took me hunting whenever I was a kid. He wasn't even a hunter himself, but because I wanted to go hunting, he always took time off from his job to, to take me hunting and everything. And I want him to be here whenever we drag this buck out, walk up on him for the first time. So I'm going to call my dad right now. And, See if I can get him out of here. Yeah, you still down there at the Wiener Roaster? Yeah. yeah. What time are you heading home? Oh, we're heading home about any time, Well, I just shot a giant buck. I wanted you to go with me to get him. Oh, okay. I mean, you don't have to. You don't have to hurry, but he, he's down. We don't have to go look for him. I, we seen him fall, and I got a camera guy here that's uh, videoing it all. So. Uh -huh. All right, we'll see you in a little while. Okay. All right, bye. That's a good sign. Let's go get him. All right. Oh yeah, I see him now. What do you think about that? Well, there he is. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> John says, there he is. <laughs> he would always take time off from his job to take me hunting. And uh, so I wanted him to be here when I recovered this one. I waited a long time to get one this big. Well, I wouldn't miss it for nothing. I'm glad, glad he'd give me a call. Yeah, my dad's always here for me no matter what I'm doing. All I got to do is call and he's right there. So I'm glad he's here for this. So this is a buck called Smokey that I was fortunate enough, blessed enough to shoot yesterday. But it's a buck that I've got a long history with on this farm. Uh, I first noticed Smokey when he was a three-year-old. Um, he was one of the best three-year-olds I'd ever seen. And in fact, I got some great video footage of him in this uh, real-world bedding grass that's right behind me here. Um, he was a regular in this food plot throughout the years. but. Uh, you know, I figured as a three-year-old he was pushing, you know, close to 170 inches. He was well into the 160s, and I was just kind of determined to, to let him go and get him into the older age classes and and uh, see how big he could really get. Um, the next year he was a as a four-year-old he was a little bigger. Uh, the next spring I found his sheds, and the story behind these sheds is pretty interesting. It's how he got his name. Uh, we was burning some of these bedding grasses on the farm here and the fire got out of control and started burning some areas where I didn't want it 
And as we was putting out that fire and fighting the fire, I come across these sheds uh, laying right there at my feet as I was putting the fire out. And you can see that the tip of this one tine is kind of charred from the fire, as well as like the back of uh, this G2 tine here. You can see the scorch from that fire. So from that day on, he was known as Smokey. Uh, like Smokey the bear, well, this is Smokey the buck. But uh, the next year, as a five-year-old, he put on several inches. I passed him uh, five different times uh, that fall. Um, he's the biggest buck I ever let walk when he carried this rack. Uh, found the, the antlers last spring and, and scored them right at 180 inches. So um, a lot of people thought I was crazy for letting a deer that size walk, but you know I felt uh, pretty confident that he could survive where he was staying. He just loved bedding in this grass field behind me, and, and that's where he was at most of the time. Um, so I felt pretty confident that he could survive and, and took the chance and let him go. And he did survive and, and put on several inches of, of antler uh, this last year. So, you know, that brings us up to this year. Um, my partner, Kevin Boyer and I, we kind of set the stage uh, to make this happen. And it, it, it's like Smokey read the script uh, last night when he came out and, and I shot him at this plot. It was like he knew what he was supposed to do. Um, we originally planted soybeans in this plot last spring, but the drought was so bad that the soybeans just never got a chance to establish and, and the deer and the other wildlife were just keeping them mowed off, and, which typically does not happen on this farm, but it was just so dry the beans never got a chance to take off and grow and, and get ahead of the browse pressure. So I came in uh, last summer and late and, and sprayed what was left of the soybeans and, and the weed growth that was here. and then. Uh, Kevin and I put in the real world's deadly dozen blend uh, this fall early. And as you can see, we got a fantastic stand here. And Smokey came right out of the bedding grass, the spot where he's bedded for years in this grass, and uh, came right to this deadly dozen plot. Um, just as, like I said, just as if it was on script. And I had Kyle Harmon from Team Radical running the video camera, and I sent an arrow through his chest. And Smokey took off, uh, ran right down a clover fire break, real world clover and chicory fire break, right next to the bedding grasses. And thought he was going to tip over right there in the clover, but uh, he started to stumble and fell into the back into the bedding grasses where he'd spent so much time, uh, you know, over the years. Um, you know, one thing I've noticed this is probably about the I don't know the fifth or so. Uh, mature buck that we've shot at this exact location on this farm, uh, both Kevin and I, and you, you know the the bucks on this farm, they just love to bed in these grasses, and, and we've seen that on other properties as well. They would rather bed in those grasses than they will they would the wooded cover, and so we try to take advantage of that. And the properties that Kevin and I own and manage, we try to get some of these grasses on there, and uh, then by by properly. Uh, uh, putting them in the right spots and, and putting food next to them. We draw out bucks like this and they may not all be this big, but, but mature bucks uh, that we're able to harvest. Serious land managers do everything they can to grow and harvest the biggest bucks possible. Maximizing herd health is part of any good management plan. Real World's exclusive Expect Healthy Deer technology is a true game changer. Developed by professional animal nutritionists working with captive deer breeders, Expect Healthy Deer technology can help your herd by enhancing the immune system, repelling insects, improving survival from disease outbreaks. This is going to lead to increased fawn production and antler growth on your property. To learn more, you can visit realworldwildlifeproducts.com.